Hi, this is Mario, my husband, and I'm Alana from Italian Cook. And today we're gonna be working on the pizza dough. And you can also use this pizza dough for the miscatejo, which is a, an Italian Christmas, well actually we do it Easter and Christmas. Uh, they're stuffed dough with potatoes and onions and minced meat. So that will follow later on in another episode. Okay, so basically we can say this is a, a, a dough, a basic dough that you can use for many things. For pizza, yeah. like you said, miscatejo is. So I'm going to show you our family secret, our, our traditional dough, mm -hmm. which is very nice. The color, uh, the taste, the texture, uh, it's just phenomenal. A as you will see later on with uh, when we start baking. So I'm going to start here. Thank you very much, Elena. So what we have here is eight cups of flour. I've already inserted the eight cups of flour within here. You have to, you have to understand it, the position of making something like this. Uh, through practice, of course, all the ingredients here are perfect. In other words, we won't have to worry about uh, adding this or putting that or not too much water, not enough water. Always make sure your ingredients are perfect. Now, what we're going to do to start is I have two envelopes of yeast. I'm going to put it in the warm water which is half a cup of lukewarm water. That's two envelopes for eight cups of flour. Uh, within the yeast, we can put the sugar because sugar will not harm the yeast. So I'm gonna put one tablespoon and a half. We'll put that aside. What I will do is now mix the two and a half cups of water with, again, the ingredients that we're gonna be using. Uh, we're going to take four tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to put one tablespoon and a half of salt. We're going to put approximately two tablespoons of tender clay or Crisco. Setting up the mixer. It's always nice to have a mixer. Uh, you could always also use, um, here, get the appliance uh, over here. We're gonna put that inside. You can do it by hand, but it's preferable to get a, a mixer like this. Uh, so now that's ready. We're going to mount it. Okay. Uh, this mixer has 10 speeds. Uh, I use speed number two. You cannot go more and less. You can do that, but you're better off at setting number two. So if you have a mixer that has six settings, obviously you'd have to go to setting one or two. I have 10 settings, so I'm going to go on setting number two. Uh, I won't need this anymore. So now basically the yeast is starting to melt and starting to activate. They usually say 10 minutes, but uh, even five or six minutes, five, five, six minutes to 10 minutes is good. You're going to mix the ingredients over here, which is the salt, the olive oil, and the tender flake or Crisco. So that's ready to go. So two and a half cups of water and half a cup of water and yeast and sugar and this here what we have here this is just preventive just in case we notice that there's not enough flour there's always always good to have this on the side we have eight cups of flour so let me start the machine always start with the yeast mixture very important this way we'll make sure that it's everywhere And you just play around, put a little bit in the center, a little bit on the side. Now, beer. One bottle of beer. And now we're ready to add the water 
mixture. machine will be able to mix everything properly. Now, like I said, these are precise measurements. Uh, doing it so many times, basically, uh, it gives you an advantage. Now, what I would do is put the safety glass on top here when you're doing this little trick. Now, it's always good, like I said, to add a little bit just so that it gives the mixer an opportunity to pick up the dough. So when the mixer starts to feel a little force, that's because it's almost come together properly. And you'll notice that the texture will change. So you know, don't don't stop the machine, just let it keep going until the bottom flour is absorbed within the dough. You know, uh, you, you wonder, should I touch the dough for the texture? Again, I'm not going to do that because I'm using precise measurements. Uh, if you're not using precise measurements, yes, you have to stop the machine, drop it, touch it, and see if the texture is good. In my case, the texture is good because I'm using, again, precise measurements. So basically, that's it. I'm going to stop the machine. I'm going to drop the dough. I'm going to remove the apparatus. Take it up. And I'm just going to basically put it on the table. You take the dough and you just basically, again, it looks easier. It looks easy, but it's not easy. But you're going to get used to it. So what I'm doing with the baby finger is I'm tucking the dough underneath like this. Okay, now, the usual 16-inch pizza takes two cups of flour. So what I do is I take the center, I cut it, and I cut it again in two. Then, take the dough, and I do the same movement that I did when it was solid. You can basically say I'm kneading right now and putting everything together, making it look a lot more attractive. There we go. And we do that with all four. So what I'm doing here, you've got four large pizzas right here, folks. Yeah. Get, can't get more precise than that. At least uh, all your pizzas are going to have the same thickness. Once our balls are ready, what we're going to do is I'm going to have Rosa come over here and take these to an area where there's a little bit of warmth under a tablecloth or under, so we're going to follow Rosa to the end. You see there, we we made dough earlier, so that dough is starting to rise already. So I will just lay these two fresh doughs over here and they will rise just like this and you just cover them up and you just leave them alone and don't get any draft or anything on them and till the balls double and then they're ready to be used. So this is basically how we make dough. Uh, we're going to see you in the next episodes when I'm going to show you how to make the pizzas, the miscate that is. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Thank you very much.